Okay, YouTubers. I'm going to do a second product review on these Pro, Pro Comp slash Speedmaster dual valve springs for the LS engines. Um, in my first review, I was uh, guardedly optimistic that they were going to be okay, that everything looked okay, everything was going to be usable. Well, I've come across the first verified issue with these Pro Comp valve springs. What I want to show to you is, okay, we'll reference the piece of paper first so that you can understand where I'm going. We have a set of dual valve springs, an inner and an outer. The inner spring is supposed to have an inside diameter, which would be the inside of that smaller spring is supposed to be 675 thousandths. Well, today, when I went to Star Performance to pick up the required retainers for these LS dual springs, which are would would be the appropriate one uh, retainer is seven one three one six seven thirteen dash sixteen would work for your normal LS dual valve springs verified by pulling a set of I think they were Pioneer brand LS dual valve springs to which these retainers fit perfectly in I will add no issues but. When we tried to put the retainers into these Pro Comp springs, they wouldn't fit. The retainers would not fit in the springs. Um, I realized the problem is in the way they have finished these springs. And it's hard to tell on this camera, but basically each end of both of these valve springs have been run against, uh, I'm assuming it was a belt sander. Uh, the only thing I can think of is they just put it on a belt sander and cleaned up the irregularities or something on the bottom of these springs. Well, what this did was created a flat spot, like a hangover, or like a ledge. So the inner spring that's supposed to be 675 thousandths only measures 655 thousandths. So basically that belt sander or whatever they used could have been an orbital sander who cares but whatever they used when they tried to doctor or treat the end of these valve springs has made a, a flat surface that hangs over the inside diameters and in some instances a little bit on the outside so basically you're down 20 thousandths where your stupid retainer can't fit inside of the spring, um, there again, if you look at just the outer spring, just the bigger spring, again, you can see that big flat area from where they've been grinding on it or whatever they did reduces what's supposed to be an inside diameter of 945 thousandths and the best I could get was an average of 920 to 922 thou. Again, this, sorry, this retainer fits perfectly in a properly finished and prepared valve spring, but won't fit in there without forcing it. Look, I don't know if you guys can see it. It literally will not snap in there. I mean, you might be able to force it in there. If you pushed hard enough, you might be able to get it, but I doubt it. So basically, I'm stuck with this dilemma because even the outer diameter, which I don't even care about, uh, is supposed to be 1290, and they're measuring 1305. Okay, big deal. I don't really care about that. If that retainer would have fit inside those springs, 
I would have had no issues with at least trying them and see how they ran. <clears throat> now, I'm wondering, I'm questioning every single aspect of their quality control. Even down to the material selected to make the spring. You know what I mean? Like normally I'm willing to give these, you know, companies that are trying to bring affordable parts to the uh, automotive world, give them a little bit of the benefit of the doubt because usually half of it you can just throw in the trash. Then the other half, there is absolutely no reason why you can't use them. Uh, but <clears throat> in this particular circumstance, I would at the very least have to use a die grinder or a stone or something to open up the inside diameters on all of these valve springs in order to be able to use them with the appropriate retainer that's supposed to fit them. You know, when you purchase a set of valve springs from a manufacturer and they tell you inside diameter 675, outside inside diameter 945, outside diameter 1290, you should be able to bank on that, go to the store, get the right components to make those springs work, and that's just not the, that's not the case. Um, I don't know for sure where I'm headed at this point. Um, I can't really return these springs because I bought them off of eBay and I've had them long enough that I, you know they're not going to just let me return them. Now then again, it's only a, what a fifty dollar uh, gamble or waste, but it's just really frustrating that their quality control was so poor that they're not even sending springs out the door that you could assemble. Like, you know, I mean, how many other people would go through this scenario and be stuck? Like, maybe that's all the money they had. Maybe they ordered these springs believing that, oh, these are dual valve springs. I'm going to buy this and throw them in the car and make them run. And then they get them and they start to put them in their car and then they're stuck. You know, pardon my French, but that's bullshit. People don't want to put up with this kind of crap whenever they're trying to throw together a motor and they're trying to trust either new, you know, new vendors on eBay, uh, you know, because a lot of people maybe have never heard of uh, Speedmaster which is clearly just a, a reboxing of pro comp quality materials, you know, where maybe they've heard of pro comp and maybe their friends and family and fellow racers, maybe they say, Oh, don't buy pro comp because you know, there's a good chance you're going to get ripped off or you're not gonna be able to use it or it's going to break or whatever. It's just mind boggling that they would bring some a product like this to market. That's not even usable out of the box. I mean, let's just be honest. It's not usable out of the box. Because you're not going to be able to put it in a stock head with the, um, oh, the inter when you have the integrated spring locator and uh, positive seal like these, they don't work. See? You can't, it won't go in the spring far enough. Watch this. Flip it over. Check this out. Let's just say that's flat. See that step on that uh, one piece deal? As far as it goes. You're not going to be able to use these springs with a factory valve guide seal and spring locator. And this is going to be without grinding that inside diameter is going to be a problem. Even uh, clearing just a, a regular uh, drive on, you know, valve guide positive seal. If this hadn't been an integrated unit, locator seal combo, you had a seal separate from your locator, you're still going to have a problem because that inside diameter is not ac accurate. And when you're talking about 20 thousands difference, that's a huge discrepancy. Uh, two thumbs down 
for these Pro Comp Dual LS Valve Springs. I'm truly, uh, you know, I'm somewhat disappointed because it should have been an easy, you know, buy the right retainer, <clears throat> excuse me, buy the retainer seal set up and, lo and locator if required and put them on and run them. But as it stands right now, that's not even going to be possible. And I'm going to have to decide, you know, what am I going to do with these things? Am I going to try to work with them, grind those inside diameters and try to run them? You know, because I truly wanted to see if they would run okay on the engine. But holy crap, is that really worth all that effort and work to, you know, make these things fit in the engine? Probably not. But I'll do some more thunking on it and see what I want to do and how to proceed forward in the uh, 4.8 turbo build because I'm trying to build it on the strictest budget possible so that anybody and everybody can duplicate it if they wanted to. So anyway, that's my negative product review on these Pro Comp slash Speedmaster LS dual valve springs. Thank you.